do the install of an underhood multiplex unit, you will need a ground cable, power cable, two power cables for the solenoid and the circuit breaker, a solenoid, a circuit breaker, and for the multiplex unit, you will need a main harness, light harness, and the box, and a controller to power it. Okay, this is your main controller harness. This one end is going to go into the module on the wide side. This side is going to go just outside the truck to the lift frame. The long wire is going to go into the cab to your controller. The red wire is going to come out, it's going to go to the fuse panel and you're going to connect it to a, a live ignition source. This one here, it's got your grounds and power. The power side is going to go to the battery side of the solenoid. The brown wire is going to go to the bottom which controls the controller. The second harness is your light harness. It will go to the small side on the module. One short side goes to the driver's side. Long side will go to the passenger side. They are labeled so you won't get them confused. The harness will differ from vehicle to vehicle depending on the application. Okay, before you install, you want to use dielectrical grease on the connections. And then you will need a quarter inch nut driver to install it. They are marked so it only goes in one way. Okay, after greasing the connections and installing them, you're going to take the control box over to the truck and install it into your desired location. Installing control module inside of the engine compartment on the driver's side if possible, locate a flat surface suitable for mounting the control module. Choose a surface that is clear of moving parts and extreme heat. A firewall, fender well, and radiator shroud are possible mounting locations as well as on fuse boxes using Velcro. Make sure that the chosen location is in a spot that will allow the wiring harness, vehicle side and light harness to reach their destination. Once location is determined, drill mounting holes and mount securely with bolts or using self-tapping screws. If any acceptable flat surface is not available, cable tie the control module securely to a harness or existing brackets. On this model of vehicle, we found the best location is in front of the air filter and we will have to secure it in place using zip ties. After installing the module, you're going to run your control harness up through the middle here and then feed it into the firewall. You can run the control harness into the firewall into the cab. Okay, so first thing we did was we mounted the solenoid and the circuit breaker to the firewall. Then we took the power cable from the battery to the circuit breaker and then from the circuit breaker to the battery side on the solenoid. The control harness is going to go to the battery side on the solenoid. The brown wire is the control wire which goes to the bottom part. The grounds will go to a ground source after making all connections cover with grease. Once mounted, everything should be zip tied so that there's no loose wires flopping around. The second side on the solenoid, you will attach a power cable and that will go to the front of the truck. Up to here. After installing the ground cable, you will run it to the front of the truck, beside the power. The light harness, now. The long side is going to go to the passenger side 
in behind the light. The short side is going to go to the driver's side. First you're going to turn on your park and your four-way. Using a test light you're going to determine which one is your signal and which is your park. It's your signal and your park. Before installing your park and turns you want to use grease in your connectors keep them from corroding. Okay, you're going to attach your turn signal wire to the turn signal on the truck. Apply the grease and then connect the park wire to the park wire on the truck. On the passenger side all you need is the signal light. After applying grease connect the wire to the truck harness. You're applying dielectrical grease to the connectors. You're going to plug the truck harness to the control harness and the control harness into the light. We're going to repeat the same process on the driver's side using dielectrical grease. The truck harness into the control harness. The control harness into the light. You can now secure the lights back into the truck. You're now going to zip tie your power cables, your power harness, light harness, and ground cable. When the plow is not being used, you will use the supplied dummy plugs to keep all connections clean. Find a 10 amp fuse from an ignition source and attach it to the main harness on, with the red wire. With the 10 amp fuse from uh, an ignition source, we'll have to use the mini tab followed with the 3 16 connector. Install the tab on the 10 amp fuse. With the tab on the 10 amp fuse we can now put it back into the fuse box. Now we can install the 10 amp fuse back in the fuse. I am now installing the 3 16 tab onto the wire. Okay. Now install the wire back on the fuse tab. Control harness is going to come underneath the dash. You will zip tie up any loose wires underneath. You're going to plug the controller into the controller harness and you'll turn the controller on. It should not light up unless the ignition has been turned on. You're now going to turn the ignition on in the truck. Turn the switch on in the controller and it should light up. After installing your light, you're going to zip tie the light harness to the lift frame and you're going to feed the harness into the lift frame. Okay, next we will be installing the lift frame harness onto the lift frame to the lights and the power unit. You will feed the lift frame harness into the lift frame and then attach to the pump and lights. Okay, you'll attach the lift frame harness, the long side will go to the passenger side and the shorter side will go to the driver's side. Before installing you want to apply dielectrical grease to your connectors. Okay, you'll attach the lift frame harness to the coils following the diagram provided and then use dielectrical grease on the top of the coils. Before attaching to the truck, use dielectrical grease on the connections for the harness. Okay. You attach the truck harness to the power unit harness. 
When removing the plow from the truck, you want to use the dummy plug that is provided in the kit to keep dirt and moisture out of the connections. To transfer the lights from the vehicle headlights to the plow lights, the following things must be done. The vehicle ignition is turned on. The vehicle headlight switch is turned on. The plow controller is plugged in and turned on. The plow is plugged in by the vehicle's grill. Keep in mind that turning the vehicle's ignition on and off acts as a reset for the lighting system, same as turning off and on the controller.